Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Giving Off This Train, and today I am back with three more Dollar Tree meals. Welcome back to my Dollar Tree meal series. As always, please read the blog post in the description first before you make any comments such as, don't you know it's not good for you? And don't you know you can find those items a lot cheaper elsewhere? It's not the point of these videos. Please read the blog post. It's gonna answer all of those questions. I have been reading all of your suggestions at the end of every single Dollar Tree meal video. I've been writing them down. I'm trying to get to them as soon as I can. And today I've got three of them to show you. Uh, they're all pretty much comfort foods. I've got some spaghetti and meatballs. I have chili slash taco soup. I even have an appetizer dish that's kind of like more of like a game day party style. So I have three criteria when it comes to making these Dollar Tree meals. Number one is that each meal needs to cost around five dollars or so. I will sometimes use spices and things I have in my cabinet, maybe some milk or eggs just depending on what I have. Feel free to use those in your meals or not if you want to stay true to the five dollars. Just use whatever you have at home. Number two, it needs to feed feed anywhere between two and four people. I know sometimes the food at Dollar Tree, their sizes are not as big as a regular grocery store, but it at least needs to feed us for one night. And then number three, the majority of my meals need to be relatively healthy. I know that's not fully possible at Dollar Tree because they don't have any fresh fruits or vegetables, but I do bend best with what I can. The obvious exception being this appetizer dinner, which you will see here in a minute. So anyway, let me go ahead and take you through the store where I bought all three meals at the same time and then show you what they all look Look like when they're done. For this video, I did all my shopping for all three meals in the same trip. So trying to find some things for a spaghetti dish, I found this little package of spaghetti. Looking for sauce, I really couldn't find a sauce that didn't have any added sugars in it. I ended up finding this can of Hunt's and it had a lot of sodium in it, but I figured I could make it work. There is no added sugar. So I grabbed one of those trying to kind of go around uh, looking for different things. Um, this is for chili. I found this package of the cornbread muffins and we've made this before. It's really, really good and would go really good with a chili. It also it needs eggs and milk and I have that at home. Looking for diced tomatoes, the only kind they had was the one with green chilies in it. So I got two of those thinking, I'll just turn it into a taco soup instead of a chili. And I found this bag of red kidney beans. I was gonna buy canned, but I figured the bag has more in it. Then going back to spaghetti, I looked everywhere for these mushrooms. Turns out they were in with like all the other jars of stuff and not the vegetables, but you'll have told me that's really good stuff. So I bought one of them. Then Texas toast. Look, I can either buy one with four or one with six. Which one do you think I chose? <laughs> And then I had to grab a bag of meatballs. I believe that completed my spaghetti and meatball dinner. Going over to the frozen vegetables, I grabbed some pepper and onion stir fry. I thought that would go really good inside that taco soup. Now we're getting into an appetizer dinner. I didn't really know what to look for, but I knew they had those chicken fries. It looked really good. It served one, but I figured I could split it. Then I've been looking at these for the longest time too, the loaded potato sticks and then the pepper bites. They looked super good. So I decided I was gonna try some of those. And then I knew I had eaten those um, pot stickers before. They're really good. I figured it was a good little appetizer. And then looking at fries, I figured fries would be good too. I ultimately decided on the crinkle cut because I thought maybe they would look and taste a whole lot better. So this is all of my cart. Let us get into the meals. The first meal is the spaghetti and meatballs. And I mean, it's just a standard spaghetti dish, a very much comfort food. I started by boiling a pot of water and I poured in the can of tomato sauce and I drained the mushrooms before putting those in. And then I added the bag of meatballs. I just um, added a little bit of Italian seasoning and garlic powder too. There's a little bit of seasoning in the tomato sauce, but I figured it could use a little bit more. Did not add any salt. Probably could have added some pepper. You can too if you want. But then I just put the lid on and I let that simmer for like 20 minutes or so while the water boiled. Then for the spaghetti, I only added half of the package because it serves eight and I was only wanting to feed like four of us. So I have more in the pantry for later. But then I put the Texas toast on a baking sheet. I baked that for about 10 minutes. Let me tell you, Allison devoured pretty much all of this Texas toast. But seriously, a dollar for this is not a bad deal. 
put that in the oven, like I said, and then when the spaghetti was finished, I drained it, put it back in the pot, added a little bit of olive oil just to keep it from sticking together. Then once all that was finished, I decided to plate it. I put about uh, three or four meatballs on each one, got quite a bit of sauce on it. Then some Texas toast on the side. This would have been really good with some like frozen broccoli or something on the side too, but this dinner was amazing. Tonight's dinner is going to be super interesting to say the least. I am doing an appetizer dinner, which I mean, we've done this a few times before. Like we go out to a restaurant and order appetizers to, you know, that's our dinner, just different appetizers. So it was kind of my thinking with all of this. I've got the anytizers, chicken fries. I've got chicken and vegetable pot stickers. I have loaded potato sticks, cream cheese, pepper bites, and some crinkle cut fries. Now here's the issue. Every single one of these bakes or cooks at a different temperature. So what I'm doing, I've got the oven preheated to 400. Um, this one says preheat to 420 and this one says preheat to 400. So I'm just going to leave it at 400 and do both of these in the oven. Now these guys have different instructions as well. Theirs have um, conventional oven. This one has toaster oven, but then this one has an air fryer. This one says 360 for the air fryer, 450 for the regular oven. So what I'm gonna try to do is cook both of these at 375 in the air fryer and see how that works because really they bake for about the same amount of time. And then these guys don't even have baking instructions. It says to pan fry or microwave or deep fry. I mean, if there's room, I might try to do these in the air fryer too. I think that's what I did before. So we'll have to see, but let's go ahead and get started. Since the fries take the longest to cook, I'm going to go ahead and get these ready because I have to bake them for 15 minutes and then um, like turn them or whatever and then let them cook for another 15 minutes. So these at first glance actually look a whole lot better than the, the other fries. Um, I bought the, I think it was a steak fries or a steak cut fries or something before and like on the on the bag it looked really thick and like what you would get at a restaurant but then when i opened the bag and dumped them out they were like super super thin and skinny and not what they look like on the bag but these guys look really good so i'm gonna probably go ahead and get these in the oven and then we can work on the other stuff next up i'll go ahead and do the chicken fries now, okay, this package only serves one, as you can see. I'm trying to get it to serve like the three of us, maybe. I don't know if that's gonna work. I actually have a few chicken nuggets left in this bag from the freezer. So I'm gonna uh, cook a couple of these for Allison too, just in case this is not enough, which it probably is not. But they both cook at pretty much the same temperature and the same time anyway. So we've only got, yeah, seven of those, which will not work for just the three of us. So I've got seven other chicken nuggets here. So let's get these in and then I'll get the air fryer started. Now this next set of food, I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work. I mean, one of the boxes says to you that you can use the air fryer, but the other ones do not. So we're gonna experiment and see. So it's the loaded potato sticks here that say you can cook it in the air fryer. So let's take a look. And again, every single one of these packages says it serves one. So I'm trying to divide it between like two or three people. Oh, these things are really cute. They kind of look like the chicken fries. So we've got six of those that we can put in. It looks like we should have enough room for the pepper bites. And again, serving size is one package, but oh man, I love jalapeno poppers. They are one of my weaknesses. 
We've got eight of these in here, so John and I can split those. Yeah, I don't know if I will have enough space for the pot stickers in here. I don't want to crowd it too much and risk like losing the cooking time. So let me get these in the air fryer and then I'll just go ahead and cook the pot stickers according to the directions. Here come the pot stickers. I have to heat a little bit of oil in a pan and then I add them in, cook them for eh, three or four minutes and then it'll be done. So let me just say that all of this stuff here is definitely not cost efficient. I mean, okay, this has two servings per container, but all the other ones serve like one. And as far as a deal goes, seriously paying a dollar for each of these is not the best deal. I know that you can go out to Walmart and you can buy a bigger package and get more for your money, but I wanted to show you what you could buy at Dollar Tree. And honestly, I've been kind of curious about a lot of this stuff for a while. These ones I've tried before and really like, but the other appetizer stuff I have not tried yet, but I'm really interested in trying them. So again, if you're feeding more than like one or two people, go out to Walmart if you can and buy the bigger sizes, but otherwise, like this is good for maybe one or two people. I also needed to add some water. I forgot that part, but then once that heats up, I'll be able to put the pot stickers in there. All right, let's go ahead and add those. Then we have to cover it and let it cook for three or four minutes. And out come the fries. We got to flip them a little bit. They're just about done. Give them a few more minutes and they should be good to go. All right, these guys are looking really good. They're nice and brown. Um, the pot stickers are finishing up right now. They just need to be a little bit brown on the bottom. They are sticking a little bit though, so I might add a tiny bit more water. Everything is finishing up at just about the same time. The fries have a few more minutes. Okay, it took a few extra minutes for those pot stickers, but they are golden brown on the bottom now, so they are done. I stuck everything else back in the oven for a few minutes just to keep it nice and hot. Let's go ahead and plate this and see what it looks like. Well, that doesn't look like too bad of a plate of food. And to go with it, while we are being cheap, got some spicy buffalo sauce I had from some leftover nuggets. Okay, before I go on to the next one, I need to stop right here and let you know that while this appetizer dinner was really delicious, it did not sit well with my stomach the next day. So this is, this is a really good meal to have like in moderation. It's a fun meal, not something you should eat every day. Trust me. All right, let's get on to the next meal. The last Dollar Tree meal for today was the taco soup. I bought the bag of dried beans. I knew I would have to cook them in the instant pot, but I figured a bag of dried beans gave me a whole lot more than like one or two cans. So I just poured it into this colander here, checked it for rocks, then I rinsed them all off and added them to the instant pot. And I love my instant pot because I can make beans in like less than an hour. So I put, poured it in. I added, I think like six and a half or seven cups of water. I didn't add any seasoning because I was going to do that later. Then I uh, put the lid on, set the knob to sealing, and then set it for 35 minutes. So it cooked for 35 minutes, did a 20 minute natural release, and after that, they were completely done. Now, I thought about like transferring these to a pot and cooking it all on the stove, but I'm like, why waste another pot and do dishes? Now listen, I totally messed this up. I'm so sorry. I thought I hit record on this part, but I added um, the peppers and onions mix. I added the two cans of diced tomatoes. I also put in a ton of chili powder, cumin, like half a ranch packet that I had. Um, I think some salt and pepper too. Like I said, I'm sorry. I thought I hit record, but I didn't. That's all that's in there. And I hit it. I set the instant pot to saute. Then I put together the cornbread muffin mix. Super easy. It just required three eggs and a little bit of milk. Whisk that together and then whisk in the cornbread muffin mix. It's supposed to make like 18 muffins, I think. I ended up having to get out another muffin tin and I got 16 out of it, which really was not too bad. Um, 
I had I, I was able to freeze some of them for later, which was nice. But I put these in for I believe 15 minutes, and after that, as you can see, the chili or the taco soup was bubbling hot. And this was actually really good. Now you can add sour cream to it if you want. We had it at home, you don't have to add it. We also added some butter to our cornbread muffins. Again, you don't have to do that either. But by itself, I think it would have been really good. But this way, I think it was really good as well. So I hope you got some good ideas on things to make from Dollar Tree now. Um, they were really delicious, by the way. That spaghetti was really good. The taco soup was really good. I'm not going to go there about the appetizer dinner. That's like a once a year kind of thing for me. But in either case, I had fun trying out some new things. So let me know what your favorite meal was. Also, if you have any other suggestions on other Dollar Tree meals that I, you would like to see me try or other items you want to see me buy and try out, please let me know. Like I said, I am writing down everything that you suggest. I've got a big list right now. I am slowly trying to get through them all. So if you don't see it yet, don't worry. It is probably coming. I'm also branching out into Dollar General. Next week, I'm actually going to the store. I'm going to do a little tour, walk around. I may not buy anything, but I would like to at least see what it looks like, what the, the types of items are, and whether it'd be worth it to do some grocery shopping there. So in the meantime, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, I highly recommend you do so and please ring that bell notification that way you can be notified when that video comes out more dollar tree videos or all my grocery hauls recipes or meal planning tips thank you all so much for watching and i will see you later